Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Lawless and I'm here to give you an informative speech. Uh, mine today is on the harms of systemic pesticide use. So here I am today, I wanted to inform the people of systemic pesticides and the negative effects it holds on the ecosystem. Um, the specific purpose is that by the end of my speech, the audience should be able to understand the development and beginning of systemic pesticides, what systemic pesticides are, and the negative impact systemic pesticides can produce. So here in California, we are a huge agricultural state. California produces nearly one half of the United States grown fruits, nuts, and vegetables. It's a defining part of who we are. Also, our earth should mean a lot to us and we need to preserve what we have so we can continue to uh, produce the bounties that we hold. Uh, with agriculture problems, uh, so many arise, but um, a top one would be pests. So in order to keep them in check, systemic pesticides have been created to aid in production. But a lot of systemic pesticides for commercial use, even some misuse of residential, can be very harming to our uh, growing ecosystems. To help us understand uh, more about sy systemics, systemic pesticides, um, here are some key points that should be discussed. Where did systemic get their where did systemic pesticides get their start and why? What are systemic pesticides? And what are the negative effects systemic pesticide use we face? So to start things off, uh, we must go over the beginning of commercial systemic use. So that is large, uh, you know, crop fields, trees, you know, uh, cotton grasses, you name it. So, um, so where did systemic pesticides get their use and why? Um, the French company Rion Poulenec Agro, now Bayer Crop Science, discovered and developed fipronil between 1985 and 1987, reaching the market in 1993. It is, a no, it is a noteworthy substance belonging to the phenylpyrazole family um, have in principle herbicidal effects, whereas fipronil is a potent insecticide. <clears throat> the discovery of imacloprid by Shinzo Kagbu and its subsequent market introduction in 1991 started the era of neonicotinoid class of insecticides. Imacloprid was followed in 1999 by theamthoxum. These are all different kinds of systemics, um, a lot of which we don't use anymore because they are very harmful to people and the environment. And it, it, they're, it's nasty stuff. Um, Followed in 1999 by theothoxum and uh, clothodynin, which is a metabolite of theomethoxum. Over the, over the following of two dec decades, neonicotinoids have become the most wide use of insecticides of the five major chemical classes, other being organophosphates, carbamates, phenylpyrazoles, and other prethroids on the global market. Uh, Janeshki and Nuan, 2008, and Cassidia Durkin, 2013. By the 1980s, many pest insects had developed resistance to the organophosphates, carbamates, and prethroids then on the market. Set against this background of increased resistance to exi existing insecticides, the neonicotinoid and fipronil were presented as having several key attributes that led to their rapid adoption in both agricultural and urban environments. These include the following, lower binding efficiencies to the vertebrae compared to invertebrate receptors, indicating selective toxicity to arthropods, high persistence, systemic nature, versatility in application, especially as seed coating treatments. Um, high water solubility, and assumed lower impacts on fish and other vertebrates, 
In turn, pesticides used beforehand had a larger impact on the ecosystem, affected humans, animals, and fish. Now that we have a solid understanding of the history of insecticides, let us understand what are they? So a systemic pesticide is any pesticide that is absorbed into a plant and distributed throughout their tissues, reaching the plant stem, leaves, roots, uh, fruit, um, or flowers. Um, systemic pesticides are water soluble, so they, they easily move throughout the plant and it absorbs water and transports to its tissues. So regardless of the manner of application and route of entry to the plant, they tr translocate throughout all of the plant tissues, making them toxic to any insects and potentially other organisms that feed upon this plant. So something important is do not eat fruit or vegetables that have been treated with systemics because you are introducing that into your own body. And if they are plants that crop and flower, um, you really shouldn't be using them because this is going to be affecting all of the pollinators and the people that are gonna be eating it. Um, so neonicotinoids, they are a new class of insecticides chemically related to nicotine. Very cool, right? Well, no, not cool. Um, the name literally means new nicotine-like insecticides. Like nicotine, the neonicotinoids act at certain kind of receptors in the nerve synapses. In addition to being effective against sap-feeding pests, neonicotinoids prove good control against certain beetles like white grub larvae and lawns, fleas, advantage flea control products, and neonicotinam pills for pets. Uh, certain wood boring pets, pests, uh, flies, and cockroaches, and the list goes on. There's so many uses for systemics. Not all, all of them are bad. Uh, fipronil is a broad spectrum insecticide that belongs to the phenopyrozole chemical family. Fipronil disrupts the insect central nervous system by blocking the ligated ion channel of the GABA receptor and glucomate gated chloride channels. This causes hyperexcitation of the con contaminated insects' nerves and muscles. Fipronil is also used to control ants, beetles, cockroaches, fleas, ticks, termites, mole crickets, thrips, rootworms, weevils, and a lot of other insects. So to move on, now that we know what systemic pesticides are, it's important to acknowledge the effects that it can have on our ecosystem. So what are the ne negative effects of pesticide use, systemic pesticide use that we, uh, that we face? So impacts on soil bi biodiversity and their implications of our ecosystem function have been demonstrated for other pesticides affecting microbial and invertebrate communities. And the same risks are likely to arise from neonicotinoid insecticides in soils. Neonicotinoids can persist in soils for several years and can cause significant adverse effects to key soil environments and organisms at environmentally realistic concentrations and therefore have the potential to pose a risk to soil uh, ecosystem services. They suggest that microbial communities have high degree of functional redundancy and resilience to impacts on their functional role in soil organic matter processing. On the other hand, reductions in highly specialized taxa with unique or critical roles in an important ecosystem function, such as decomposition and nutrient cycling, can measurably impact the delivery of ecosystem services. Earthworms can be categorized as such. And since adverse effects on earthworms have been reported at realistic concentrations of neonicotinoids in soils and leaf litter, this provides reasonable evidence that some soil ecosystem services can be impaired by the use of neonicotinoid insecticides. And further empirical studies coupled with ecological modeling to test the likelihood and the extent of these effects are warranted. 
So neonicotinoids are the latest generation of pesticides that have the ability to enter freshwater bodies. So rivers, lakes, the ocean, you know, you name it. So they negatively affect invertebrate populations, which in turn can reduce emergent insects that numerous water dependent birds and other wildlife depend on. Many aquatic species are directly exposed to neonicotinoid and fipronil insecticides in water. Even over prolonged periods, data from long-term and large-scale field monitoring have demonstrated the negative effects of imidacloprid and invertebrate life. Such negative impacts have the potential to adversely alter the base of aquatic food web given that this group is a critical link to transfer nutrients and energy from primary producers to consumers. The concerns regarding pesticide contaminated dust from neonicotinoid or fipronil treated seeds originated from reports of atypical levels of honeybee losses. In several countries following the planting of treated maize in spring, these incidents have been reported in Italy, France, Slovenia, Germany, the U.S., and Canada dating as far back as 1999 and as recently as 2013. In all cases, a great number of dead and dying bees were found near the hive entrance. Many of these bees were foragers. However, in incidents reported in the U.S. in 2010 and 2011, many of the dead bees had the characteristic pubescence associated with the newly enclosed nurse bees, and neonicotinoids used in seed treatments were consistently found in pollen stored in affected hives. Given that bee deaths have occurred in conjunction with sowing of treated seeds, much attention has focused on possible routes of exposure for honeybees, both during and shortly after the planting period. So Shinzo Bio and Goka 2014 demonstrated that field realistic residues of neonicotinoid insecticides and pollen pose high risk to honeybees and bumblebees. While in the field synergisms with egogestrol inhibiting fungicides will further amplify these risks. They found that imidacloprid poses the highest risk to bumblebees, 318 to 49% probability to reach the median lethal cumulative dose after two days of feeding on their realistic dose of pollen. That's pretty high. Um, and the theomexicam, theomthoxam, excuse me, uh, the highest risk to honeybees. Because of the persistence of neonicotinoids in soil and water, their use of systemics, which facilitate uptake by wild plants and agricultural crops, all pollinators can be exposed to these insecticides in lethal or sublethal concentrations through multiple exposure routes. Neonicotinoids and fipronil have known lethal and sublethal, sublethal effects on domestic and wild insect pollinator populations at extremely low concentrations. So these are a little better, but not great. So now that we have a good sense of what systemic pesticides are, as well as how repetitive use and overuse, we negatively affect the ecosystem with intense, pe with intense pesticides. Um, we are more informed about systemic pesticides amazing. Um, we know the history of systemic pesticides, what they are, and how adverse effects of systemic pesticides can cause on our ecosystem. So now that we have learned about these systemics, we are more aware of what they are to handle them responsibly and the harm it causes on our ecosystem. Uh, so whenever using systemic pesticides, please look at the directions so we don't further harm our environment and the creatures we depend on. Uh, maybe as an agricultural state, we can learn more on organics and our basics in plantings and only using systemics as a last resort. 
Uh, lastly, uh, we, will, we will learn to develop even better agricultural pesticides that will keep our plants and ecosystems safe. Stay planty, everyone. Thank you.